After d4, d5, bishop f4, black plays c5. And now the move we're going to go through in this video is going to be knight c3. So in the past we went through c3, e3, and um, other moves. This is also quite popular nowadays, and we have to know what to do. So this is not a Verasov. It's some sort of Verasov, right? If white plays knight c3 first, right, after uh, uh, like a second move, right, then we play knight f6. And then white can go for this plan, bishop to f4, and there's the typical attack of knight b5 that we have to be very careful uh, because knight b5 and knight c7 is a typical attack. But I'll explain that when I talk about the Verasov in the next days. In this case, um, okay, white now played third move, knight c3, because this is a London system, right? And white didn't play knight c3 immediately. We don't have to play knight f6. We, we should not play knight f6. We need to play knight c6 now. And the attack of knight b5 with bishop f4 is not even something that needs to be discussed in this game, simply because black can make it in time to play rook to c8. And so we don't even need to play a move like a6, a slow move like a6. We can just develop the pieces and worry about nothing. Okay, let's just quickly mention what happens after knight b5, right? Cheeky uh, attempt of going to c7 already. Well, this is simply met by queen a5 check. And the white player cannot block with the pawn, as he will do uh, in a Verisov. He has to, well, because if he blocks with the pawn, we take the knight for free. It's a fork. The knight will have to go back, right? And then we're winning this pawn, pinning the knight. So that's a disaster. Okay, so white now plays e3. By the way, e3 is not the only move that can be played. White can also play e4, but I'm going to go through that later on. So after e3, what do we do? We have to take the pawn. Of course, the pawn uh, has to take us back. White cannot take with the queen because the knight is protecting that square. What happens if white tries the cheeky knight b5 attempt now? In this case, still, it doesn't work, simply because we can play e5. And we're attacking the bishop. The bishop will have to move. White has just lost the pawn for nothing and also lost control of the center and also lost the tempo by going here because this is not going to work we can even think of building a pawn chain here with f6 we can play a6 kick the knight away and this is just a huge disadvantage already for white so white will have to take back now it's black to move our move is bishop f5 we need to immediately develop the pieces from the queen side so in case of knight b5 which right now is actually possible well not right now because bishop f5 is the right move but right now in this position without us playing the bishop White could play the move knight b5 because this comes with knight b5 uh, attempt of going to c7. The queen check is blocked by c3 and we can't take the knight because of the bishop and that's a very annoying situation to be in. So we play bishop f5, we're out of trouble. So let's quickly mention for the very last time, at least we know we've covered the whole thing. What do we play now? Very simply, rook c8, we stay calm. The knight can't go to any of these squares, they're both protected. If knight c7 can take with the rook. And now how to continue. Let's say white continues with knight to f3. The most normal move you can imagine. e6 for black. We have to develop the pieces. That's how the London system is going to go. I mean, it's the London system that we're talking about. So it's never going to be a very sharp opening. So after bishop to d3, for example, what happens in this case? In this type of game, when the white player played the knight to c3, he committed a mistake because... You don't want to block the c pawn. It is correct. The more accurate way to play in the London is to play the c3 pawn to build the chain. This knight c3, that was just the problem. It wasted the tempo. And the pawn in c and d are not, not connected right now. So now we're going to... We're not going to trade, of course. We're not going to help the development of the white player. We're going to play bishop g4. And remember that we are putting pressure on d4. We just have to... We just have to remove that knight from f3. And we're attacking the pawn in f4... In, in d4. And it cannot be defended. I mean, it can be defended. It is defended by a piece, but a piece can be removed from a, with a6, just to make an example. So after the bishop d3 move, remember to avoid the swap because white's mistake of playing knight c3 consists of not reinforcing the defense of the d4 square, which we will target. So bishop g4, for example, after h3, we take the knight. There's no problem. We help the development of the opponent queen, and then we kick the knight away so that we can take d4. So the knight has to go back, knight d4. Uh, this is just a line. We're going to see others, uh, many other scenarios. And then the queen moves, um, because the knight was attacking it. Queen e3. Let's just see how to consolidate the advantage. We're, we're a pawn up. We play knight to c6. So now let's just play a bunch of forcing moves um, so that we can transition to the winning end game, and then we can go on to the next lines. We're threatening d4 now. This is forcing white to play his best move, which is knight to e2. Now we develop the knight f6, and after white castles, we finish the development. We're up a pawn. Of course, we're interested in swaps. 
also bishop d6 we can think of playing e5 maybe but after this move white's best move is rook to a to, a to c1 um this is a weakness this c2 square is a weakness we're going to target it eventually with the uh with the knight and with the rook so rook a to c1 let's just go on a few moves and then we're going to go on to the other lines bishop f4 and then the knight takes back these are just examples, right? They don't. These moves don't have to necessarily happen. Um, the line we could even interrupt it already because we're up in material, but one pawn is not really that much. So let's just talk about the, the end game and uh, what's the problem. The problem, as mentioned already, is the C pawn that has been stuck there forever because of the extra move that White made by uh, moving the knight. Because of that, we had our chance to develop the bishop and the rook. Now we have a rook on an open file, and so we, we, we're better placed. So after white plays c3, also to put more control of the square d4 because we're threatening to push d4 and e5. Uh, let's just play some uh, normal moves. Rook e8. These are the best moves that can be played in the position. Rook f to d1. Queen c7. Our idea now is to play queen to e5 and force a swap of queens. The queen can't move away because it will lose the knight. And if the queen goes to g3, we can play g5 even. If it goes to uh, f3, then we can play queen to g5 with a threat of knight e5. Another idea here that white could have, especially because this bishop is never going to be able to be effective. When the white player is missing the e pawn, right, there's no way the player to ever play a pawn in e5, which means that the knight in f6 cannot be removed by a pawn. It, it can just stay there forever, which means that the influence that this bishop has over the square h7 is nullified. So that means if white tries this move, which is actually considered the best move by the engine, after bishop f1, trying to fianchetto to the bishop eventually, Black continues with knight to e7, obviously trying to go to f5, but after g4, black continues with h6, and white has no moves now. And um, we're going to stop the line here, because I don't want to go that further away, because there's just too many possible moves. We played a bunch of forcing moves, but i got to go on with the video, because there's so many other lines we need to talk about. Uh, also, the position here is like minus 4. In this position, let's just mention that white can play a move like c4 to open the files, uh, having the rook doing something. Uh, but we could just play d4. Black, white can't take back because this is a fork. And uh, let's also mention another type of move like a4 or any other. Black in this position will just play e5 with an attack on the knight. And when the knight moves, we're going to improve the position of our pieces. After that, g6, a move like bishop g2, we play e4. And it comes with an attack on the knight. And the only move will be basically knight b4. Now we play knight to f4 attack in the bishop. And I think we can stop the line here. I mean, we were just looking at this line for... And in order to be a little bit more accurate in how to more or less continue this endgame, but in the, in this open endgame, there's just too many things that can happen, too many different moves. This is the scenario of how it looked like, but you know we have an advantage. We're very comfortable here, advantage of minus four or something like that. And yeah, we were up a pawn very early in the game, so let's go back. So let's make a recap. After bishop f4, c5, the move knight c3 is met by knight c6. E3, pawn takes, and now let's quickly mention. Knight b5 attempt. Uh, as we said before, it's met by e5. So if this happens for real, let's let's see how to exploit this very quickly. After bishop g3, we attack the knight. The knight will have to go back. Can't go to c3. We'll have to go to a3. We play queen to a5 check. And now there's several ways to stop this check. c3 is simply met by pawn takes. The pawn can't take back because that drops everything. We're going to have an attack on the pawn with a check on the rook, on the knight. The bishop is also attacking the knight. A move like queen to d2 is met by bishop to b4, pinning the queen to the king. And if pawn takes, uh, if pawn plays c3, we just take. And we're still successfully pinning the queen to the king. The queen will have to move. It's going to be a disaster. We have this cover attack. After the check, if king goes to e2, we play simply knight f6. And white's best move now is queen to c1, putting more control of the square e3, which we want to take. So pawn takes and queen takes. And now bishop to c5 comes, uh, comes with a temp on the queen. The queen will have to move again. And a swap of queens will be favorable for white. Not in a way that white will be winning next, but in a way that it will nullify our attack. So now we play queen to b6. Simply save the queen. Also comes with an attack on b2 and a fork, rook and knight. So after white plays queen to d3, protecting the knight, meaning that the move b2 only wins a pawn, but allows white to continue development. Rook can come down with an attack on the queen or to d1. We play bishop f5. This still comes with a tempo. It's attacking the queen. The queen cannot take the bishop because knight d4 wins the queen, right? It's a fork. 
So after queen to c3 only move, uh, also queen to b3 will run into the same fork. Um, so queen to c3 best move, we play knight to e4 attacking the queen again, queen will have to go all the way back, only move, and now knight d4 check, and king d1, and finally we take this pawn. So I don't know if you're going to remember all of these moves, the thing is that sometimes you're playing a blitz game online, you've, you're facing the London maybe in a blitz tournament or in a rapid tournament, and they actually play that line. Uh, this was just a quick insight on uh, how to capitalize on that kind of mistake. 